Hello, LifePoint family, and to our extended friends. I hope this message finds you well. I'm so thankful for a church that loves to gather together, to gather to fellowship and to greet one another, to gather to hear the word of God proclaimed, to give and pray, and to praise the Lord as he has redeemed us by his very blood. I've hoped all week long that we would be able to gather together this next Sunday morning in corporate worship. The command to preach the word, to be ready in season and out of season, to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching is one that I hold dear. And I also hold dear the call that we gather together as the saints of God. And yet in this season, under the providence of God, this decision to gather together has been largely taken out of our hands. And so I am suspending all gatherings in an effort to submit to the local authorities' newly imposed resolution. We are not forsaking the assembly. We are obeying our authorities who have charge over our protection. And I would ask that you pray diligently for them in the days ahead. I've been heartened by President Trump's response and that of Governor Abbott and Mayor Gunter and our local board. I would ask that you lift them all to the Lord in prayer that they would have wisdom during this time. Beloved, I believe that we are being taught how precious the gathering of the saints are. Friends, I've been meditating on Psalm 84 over the past couple of hours, and I want to read it to you now. What we find in Psalm 84 is one who is in a position of not being able to gather together with the saints of God. His heart is crying out that he wants desperately to be in the assembly of the Lord. And I hope that this is our heart's cry in the days ahead. I, I want to encourage you that the Lord that we pray to, he looks upon our hearts. And so as we desire to come together and yet aren't able to, I hope that he finds all of our hearts in a position of the psalmist here in Psalm 84 of, of wanting to be together. And so if you would turn to Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts. My King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. We're trusting in him in these difficult times times. And beloved, I would encourage you that we can do largely the things that I've mentioned, even though we aren't gathering. We can still hear the word of God proclaimed. We can still give. We can still pray. We can still praise his name as we spend time in our homes. W.S. Plummer writes of Psalm 84, believers always have more in which to rejoice and for which to give thanks, then they have calling for mourning or for sadness. There's a propensity in our hearts to grumble and to complain. And I would encourage you that the Lord has given us abundantly more reason to be grateful for all that he has done in ransoming our souls from sin. Uh, he's given us an abundant reason to be grateful for a church family that will look after us in the weeks Ahead. He's given us reason to rejoice in the common grace of a government that is thoughtful in what it's doing. Friends, there's a propensity, I believe, in the human heart to overreact to 
difficult days. There's a propensity even in the church, I believe, in some measure or another to want to continue on when the providence of God has so clearly said that we can't gather together, that we can't have what we normally have on Sunday mornings. Uh, There's a propensity to want to put all of our programs online. But friends, you know my heart. You know that I've never believed that we have ever depended on a program. We're not a business dispensing with a product. We are a gathering of people who once were much of the darkness that we see in the world around us today. And yet we have been made by grace light in the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't reproduce the gatherings that we all long for any more than one would be able to reproduce the joy of a wedding over a online format. So I will not attempt to reproduce Sunday mornings in any fashion. W.S. Plummer also wrote, It is much more important for us to learn wisdom by our trials than for us to escape them. I recently read a sermon by Samuel Grimke. He was a pastor in Washington, D.C. during the Spanish flu of 1918. And he begged a question at the beginning of a sermon that he preached after that flu had passed. And I want to read it to you now. He writes in the opening of his sermon, Now that the worst is over, I've been thinking, as doubtless you have been, of these calamitous weeks through which we have been passing, thinking of the large numbers of those who have been sick. And he continues, What is the meaning of it all? What ought it mean for us? Is it to come and to go and we be no wiser or better for it? Surely God had a purpose in it, and it is our duty to find it out as far as we may what that purpose is and to try and profit by it. Friends, we have the benefit of that question before we even really get through the heart of this storm. Let us not waste that question. Let us consider why the Lord is allowing that we're not going to gather together this Sunday. Friends, I would encourage you that even during this time, we can still look long into his word individually in our homes. Fathers and husbands, I would encourage you to lead your families in devotions daily during this time period. His word is still active in our lives. Our teacher is still instructing our hearts by his spirit through the means of the word. I would encourage you to think about The heroes of the faith, those like John, who was not able to gather with the saints as he was on the Isle of Patmos, and yet in God's providence, he was still able to pen Revelation. Or think about Paul as he was imprisoned in a Roman jail cell and how he wrote many of the pastoral letters that have given vitality to the local church over these past thousands of years. God is indeed good. Or think of John Bunyan as he was imprisoned and yet wrote uh, The Pilgrim's Progress chronicling that character Christian as he moved through the city, away from the city of of, of despond and uh, away from the legalism and away from all of the, the, the vanity of this life and was able to find the living God and come finally to that celestial city. Friends, the saints of God have often not been able to gather together because of differing trials. Trials are the normal ebb and flow of the Christian walk, and yet we've been insulated from them largely. To borrow the words of Charles Spurgeon, let us not find this to be a time where we grumble and complain or where we are found with fear, but let us greet this COVID-19 challenge as a wave that will throw us against the rock of ages, as something that will allow us to press deeper into what the living God is doing in our community in our church, and in our own hearts and lives. Beloved, I believe that we have the unique ability being bought by the blood of Christ and renewed by the Spirit of God to rejoice through the storms of life, to find joy in the midst of darkness. Let us rejoice in the days ahead. So what can you expect from LifePoint in the days ahead? Well, one, I will be in the office, Lord willing, over the next several days, and if you have any need, you're certainly willing or welcome to stop by. You can also contact me via email or Facebook. I would be delighted to have a call from you. I want you to know that I am your servant in the days ahead. I would love to pray with you. 
and I would love to help you in any way that I can. I would encourage you to serve one another as Christ's body, to be salt and light to your neighbor. I'd also like to draw your attention to a phrase in Psalm 84. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways of Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of spring. The early rain also covers it with pools. There's a picture here that those who delight in the Lord can take a difficult situation and make it a place of abundance, of joy, of refreshment. What what the psalmist is actually talking about here, the Valley of Baca, is probably lost on our modern imagination, but the immediate writers would have understood what he meant. The Valley of Baca was a place that would have been uh, a, a traveler would have passed through on his way to Jerusalem. And on his passing through this valley, he would have found a grove of mulberry trees fresh with fruit. And this fruit would have been a means of grace, of joy, and of refreshment, a a way of, of being nourished along the journey. And this has been juxtaposed in my mind with Isaiah's writing in Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3, as the prophet writes, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to conform all who, to comfort rather, all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. We might not have a grove of mulberry trees as we pass through these next weeks, but beloved, at LifePoint, what we do have is the grace of God in the planting of oaks of righteousness in this congregation by the will of God. Men and women who have grown into the word of God over these many years and who can share with us their wisdom in the days ahead. So we will be putting devotions in the days ahead online. Many I will lead, but I will also enlist the help of others. I hope these might be a way of refreshment and of finding joy in the word of our living God. Friends, I also want to take just a moment to encourage you not to neglect your giving. It's vital that as we pass through these next weeks that you continue to give to sustain the work of LifePoint Baptist Church's witness in our community. I want to leave you with the words of the psalmist, in Psalm 46, verse 10, amongst all of the, amidst all of the difficulty and um, the panic and um, the change that we will come against in the days ahead, I want you to hear the voice of the Lord in these words. Be still and know that I am God. Beloved, I want you to know that I'll be entrusting you to the Lord who rules and reigns over this present difficulty. And my deep desire is that you would spend time praying that even as we go through this difficulty, difficulty, that his name would be magnified, that he would be glorified in the way that we live, that he would be manifest in our heart and that we would feast upon his word even as we are not allowed to gather together, that we would commit to heart Psalm 84 and that we would be stirred with greater and greater longing over the days ahead to gather together again. And until we meet again, I want you to know that my heart continues to echo the words of the psalmist in Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts, My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. LifePoint family, I love each one of you, and I look forward to hearing from you in the weeks ahead. If there is anything that we can do to serve you, please let me.